Hello everyone, welcome back to Astar from Macarbo's channel. During the previous video I explained how the distributor with a points and condenser work. Today's video we're going to go over a related component which is a ballast resistor and you're going to know why a distributor that has points and condenser has to have a ballast resistor. So let's get this camera up close so you can see it better. Okay, so now that we have the camera up close, let's go over some of the components involved. We have the ballast resistor obviously, which is what we're focusing on. We have the ignition coil, we have a starter, starter solenoid, ignition switch, battery. The system that you see here is an early force system design. Other makes and models are going to be slightly different in design, but the principle is the same. Ford has an external solenoid. This will make it a lot easier to explain this concept. That's why I chose that. So let's go over the concept of the ballast resistor. What the ballast resistor does, it lowers the voltage that is being supplied to the ignition coil from 12 volts to anywhere from 8 to 9 volts on average. So let's see how this takes place. The battery is going to supply a constant 12 volt voltage to the ignition switch. When you turn the key on, 12 volts are being sent to the ballast resistor. And as mentioned, the ballast resistor is going to lower this 12 volts to anywhere from 8 to 9 that are going to be sent to the ignition coil. So now you know that on a point system setup, the ignition coils never get 12 volts. Because if they did, they would overheat and they wouldn't last very long. To verify this, you can use a voltmeter, you can turn the key on, you can check the power that is arriving to the ballast resistor, you can check the voltage that is coming out, you can either test it here or test it over here, and it shouldn't be 12, it should be anywhere from 8 to 9. So that's when the key is on and after the vehicle starts. But let's take a look at something else that happens when you're cranking the vehicle over. You gotta realize that a starter is gonna draw a lot of amps, and when the starter is cranking, when you're trying to turn the vehicle over, it's going to lower the voltage of the battery momentarily because it's taking so much juice. And this would cause the voltage coming out of the ballast resistor going to the ignition coil to drop way below the 8 volts because there are so many amps being drawn. So to make up for this, here on the solenoid, let's focus on the fourth solenoid, you have the S terminal that is coming from your ignition switch when you're trying to crank it over. Power comes to this terminal. Plus, on one side of the solenoid, you have constant power from the battery. It's directly connected. So as you're trying to crank the vehicle over, power flows from here to here and is sent to the start. This particular start is grounded to the block. So normally you won't see a negative cable. The ground is the block itself. And just like I said, the early Ford designs had an external solenoid. Other vehicles will have a solenoid mounted to the starter. And even Fords that still had the external solenoid, eventually they ended up putting a solenoid on the starter. So you had two solenoids. Kind of interesting setup, but they did that in the 80s and 90s. But let's focus on this early design. So we don't get out of the subject here. So as you're cranking the vehicle over, this terminal, the I terminal, gets energized. And direct current is sent to this side of the ballast resistor. And at that point, direct voltage from the battery is sent to the coil. We already said that the starter is going to be drawing a lot of amps and lowering the voltage. So what this is going to do is going to make the voltage somewhere around this neighborhood when the ballast resistor is bypassed and the starter is being turned over. As you let go of the key once the vehicle starts, this wire doesn't have current anymore and obviously this won't either. So we go back to this one and the coil is going to receive the current through the ballast resistor. Now some vehicles, this wire may not be connected here. It may be directly connected to the coil. It could be a slightly different design, but you still accomplish the same thing. Now another example could be that a vehicle manufacturer may not use the solenoid to do this. It may actually use the ignition switch. And what that would do is you would have another wire coming from the ignition switch when the vehicle is being turned over. So it would be energized at the same time that this one would be energized. Plus a different manufacturer it wouldn't have an external solenoid so it would be mounted to the starter. So you would have this cable coming here to the solenoid another one going over here or directly to the coil either way when the vehicle is being turned over and as you let go of the key then you go back to this one 
So different manufacturers, like I said, are going to do it differently, but the purpose is the same. And back to like I said, I chose this setup because the components are easy to identify. Now another main reason why there's a ballast resistor on those early model vehicles is because when the vehicle starts, your alternator is going to put an output of anywhere from 13.5 to 14 volts. And that's even after it's regulated. So putting 13.5 to 14 volts to an ignition coil would definitely fry it. And not only it would fry the ignition coil, but that current would also affect the points. So even the points would get burned faster. So the ballast resistor makes up for that. That way the ignition coil doesn't get the 13 and a half volts. Now let's go over some troubleshooting on the ballast resistor. One of the fastest ways to identify a bad ballast resistor is when you turn the engine over, it starts, and as soon as you let go of the key, it dies. And the reason for that is because of what we explained. When you're cranking it over, you're bypassing the resistor, so you're sending current directly to the coil, so it operates, so it starts. And as soon as you let go of the key, there's no more current being sent directly, so the coil stops working and the vehicle dies. That is when you have a completely bad ballast resistor. If you want to do further troubleshooting, just to make sure, you use a circuit tester, you ground one end of the test light, you use a probe right here, so you turn your key on, First, you make sure that you're receiving power to it, obviously, right? Before you assume that it's bad, because if it's not receiving power, it could be a fuse in between it. it could be a wire that is caught, pinched, chewed by a mouse, you name it. So if you are receiving power, then you test the other side, and it should also have power, and the coil obviously should have power. If you have power here, and you don't have power here, then you have a bad ballast resistor. You can also unplug the wires, and test the resistance of the ballast resistor itself. The average resistance readings on the ballast resistor is going to be between 1.2 and 3 ohms. Normally the heavy duty ballast resistors are going to have about 1.4 ohms resistance, just so you know. So there you have it. Now you know how the ballast resistor works and why it's so important to have it in a distributor that has points and condenser. Thanks for watching. See you next time.